Ladies and gentlemen, we've got another show match for you this time around, also commissioned by Sean V. Thank you very much, Sean. We've got Dark Angel in the blue color here, playing as Sergeant Forge. And over on the other side, in the red, this is Psylac returning to yet another show match. May not have been able to take on Liam, but maybe Dark Angel is more up his alley. This is certainly a more equal skill kind of thing. They were a team for the longest time in the amateur leagues. And arguably have surpassed that kind of skill bracket. So let's see how they face off against each other. Now Forge versus Arbiter is just one of those uh, matchups that in my opinion is pretty equal between the two. Forge has a lot of ways to put away Arbiter, but Arbiter has a lot of ways to control the early game. So, remains to be seen who gets ahead, but typically speaking, if the game goes super, super late, Arbiter um, does go out of control. Seeing a nice little bit of grunt aggression here, but the Marines make the Sentinels angry. Quick shout out to our website subscribers who are helping the project stay alive, and also to all the show match commissioners who have um, allowed us to host these show matches without spending any of our own budget. Thank you so much. Alright, the side powers shared between the two players. Nobody managed to go to both locations. Overall, Psylac has got to be happy with the results. He's going for Elite Enforcers right away. Not a ghost build, which is interesting. Dark Angel ends up stealing a mini base in the back from Psylac. Perhaps Psylac has made a little bit too many grunts. Already nine grunts at two minutes, so the population is really showing itself here. Uh, 36 pop to nine. But as long as they can't threaten buildings or take too many nodes at once, it should be okay for Dark Angel. He's getting out the Forge Hog after all. And then going into Jackrabbits to follow up. If the Jackrabbits get upgraded for uh, detection, then even Cloak won't be a problem. And generally speaking, I, I don't really think that Psylac would be going for that anyways, but... Hey, a little bit of Jackrabbit Hellbringer. It's never hurt anyone if you're UNSC playing against Banished. It's such a good idea in general. Just be careful not to face mass scouts when it happens. That could be a problem. But we've got the Fochog already out. So this is looking great. Ooh, a bit of a miss on the stasis grenade there from the Enforcer. Jackrabbit doing some good dodging. I really like how Dark Angel is skirting here on the edges. Has to take down the Sentinel. But now the grunts are kind of unprotected. They cannot be upgraded to have mines and cloak is not coming in. Suicide grunts, interestingly enough, from Silac as he must have discovered that there's a barracks in the back for Hellbringers. Now, Suis aren't the best kind of answer against Hellbringers because actually one to one, they cost the same and they'll survive. By the way, the Fortrogara is affecting the rally flag here that definitely needs an armor buff. <laughs> Armory is still up. I'm assuming it's going to... The ammo round's already in, so why is the armory still there? Okay, there we go. Second generator coming up for a UNSC player. And I assume for Psylac now as well. There it is. Minibase has been destroyed and the Enforcers can kind of handle the... The Halbringers, that's one of the things that Arbiter is so good at. That you just make Enforcers and it takes care of both your anti-infantry needs, at least against Hellbringers, and they also um, can go after buildings, so that's very clean execution thus far from Psylac. But he is going to lose these these power nodes, that's a little bit annoying for him. Jackrabbits can just decapture it, so they might not be able to retake it as, uh, let's say, Cutter's Jackrabbits would. But just taking it away is good enough. Doesn't look like Dark Angel is much interested in upgrading the Jackrabbits. He's just going for a faster tier 2. Then has the ability to transition into Vortogs. And I assume uh, more Hellbringers with Dispersion Nozzles. That's a good combo for sure. It's 
Tons of grunts getting taken down. They're going for the next power node. Well, already was captured by Dark Angel. Population wise, Silac has caught up. Despite the heavy losses. And now is in tier 2, whereas Dark Angel has not yet clicked. That's what you get for. As a reward for capturing all those power nodes early. It's good work. Good work. But now there's a Marine here that will easily be able to. Capture this and the power node capturing is currently at a one-to-one -one situation. Dark Angel going to grab an expo real quick before clicking up to tier two. As long as he has a map control, absolutely no worries about that. But Arbiter is gonna come out. And he's not such an easy hero to take on as any UNSC, to be honest. Um, I guess you have an easier job with cutter snipers, but only for a certain duration as once he has his tier 2 upgrade he can kind of just run them down during the rage mode you have to be really careful with that warthogs i like as a solution to him the dark angel has to make them in the first place and thus far he's not so hunters in addition would be very nice to see Oh, 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 here they come. The mines are right there. Oh, no. Oh, no. They go over the next one. The two jackrabbits will blow. And then there's the remaining ones that are getting obliterated by the hunter. Would love to see an anvil around here in the middle of the grunts. That was good. Also got the stasis mine there. And maybe some of the rabbits will escape. Uh, picking off the hunter would be great because it's so expensive. The Fortrog still had sh some shields and has a tier 2 upgrade now. A Dark Angel indeed going for several garages, but also mixing in an air pad. Maybe we will see some Hornets. What about Psylac though? He's working on Swift Fury right now, and we got a subscription from... <laughs> bada bing bada boom! <laughs> That's a great username. Love it. <laughs> Thank you. Bada bing bada boom. Anyway, Arby is on the other side of the map, but the Fortrog is here to respond. So can protect the base a little bit with the Aura. The Rabbits will be adding some extra DPS. Uh, nice ram from the Hog, but this guy can take it for the moment. Doesn't get too staggered, as I assume Psylac did the micro, but moving him around. If you spam click as you're getting rammed, there's a high likelihood of your unit not getting staggered. Very useful. Very useful if you can do that. Now, a little bit of health has been reclaimed here. As he's got a bit of a life leech. Uh, but yeah, Dark Angel is gearing up to more and more Warthogs. And turrets are coming in. The supply pad upgrades are going to come cheap as well. But he might just jump tech, honestly. He's not spending any power, right? He's got two gens. Does he have three gens? No. No way. Uh, however... Dark Angel has, sorry, I mean Psylac has follow-ups. He could drop in the Enforcers, which are right here, right now. Just empowering everybody, including the Arbiter, who's gonna have uh, his Tier 2 upgrade done. He's trying to dodge the Forgehog shots, but we've got a Lag Bomb coming in. They're kind of not hitting uh, any of the Enforcers, so they can keep doing their work. Dark Angel's base is at half health, but he's got the Nightingale for the moment to help heal. RB is staying alive for long enough so that everyone else can retreat. And that hunter should probably be picked up as well. I'm gonna see a counter attack. There was never a second base of Psylac. He's just going very heavy on these hunters. I would love to see him upgrade his back pad and just grab the base. But now that the Vortox are here, it's not such a convincing move to do that. A lot of damage could be coming through. Granted, Arbiter comes back, you can heal up and whatnot, but is that gonna be enough? Well, if there's only one Warthog to try to stop him back at home, uh, the RB will just heal itself faster than the damage comes in. But as for the other Hogs, they're hurting Tylak's base a lot. There's no other leader powers for our UNSC player right now. Tylak is at 69 population. Nice. Warthog has used the Anvil round so can't finish off the Grunts and Hunters. I guess health damage is what he'll have to walk away with. Working on the third base already, but Psylac is controlling the entire map. Look at this, all the power nodes have been claimed. 
There's a little bit of supplies left in the middle. And there's this power node as well that he could claim. Dark Angel's third base is not safe, however, as the Grunts, uh, Hunters and Enforcers are going across right now. But this base is totally naked, so supply income wise, our UNC player is doing fantastic. But Psylac is going into tier 3, which will make his Arbiter essentially invincible. He's got the shields back on that boy, by the way. Very nice to deny Dark Angels Expo. You know, the power nodes will make up for stuff for a while, but at some point, Psylac will be resource starved, and it seems that that point is right now. Tier 3 is coming in soon, and then you can upgrade the, the RB. Maybe that guy can go across the map and do some damage, which would be much needed. Uh, getting the Nightingales here would be fantastic, too. They're really expensive. Another Elite Spirit Assault is ready. Let's see if the main is turreted. Oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah, but they're not anti-infantry, so that could play a role here. Uh, grabbing the mini bases real quick for our banished player would totally work, in my opinion. That's a good move. Now suddenly, Silax third base is under the same kind of threat that Dark Angels was earlier. Silax maxed out. Tier 3 has upgraded this base. It's done in a moment. He's got the shield at home uh, and an anti vehicle turret as well. So, this is looking good. Triple gen. As long as he doesn't lose units, his economy is comparable to Dark Angels. But our man has swapped into vultures already. The first one's about to come out. There's a triple air pad. As long as he can afford an anti infantry turret, which is upgrading right now. Plus, smoking the back is a very smart idea too. The generator is safe, the air pad not so much. So that one will be torn down. But meanwhile, the anti infantry turret is doing some good work. Uh, the Hawks could come back home, but no, they're counter-attacking instead. Uh, Psylac has upgraded the base. The engineer is hurt, however, but the Forge Hog is tier 3 upgraded with the Goss Shots. That's going to be a problem for the RB. Meanwhile, there's another Enforcer drop. Vulture Nuke doing a little bit of work, but no second Vulture has arrived just yet. The Hunter tanking like a champ. Oh man, the turret once again targeting a Hunter. That's not the luckiest targeting there for Dark Angel. He's lost all his free back buildings, but he's doing some nice counter damage. And a Wraith is out to help the RB defend here. I do wonder, is the RB upgrade? Yes, it is. It's coming in. Now has a bubble shield. Will be reflecting damage, getting these hogs to essentially kill themselves. But you've got the Nightingale over them, so that offsets that. Forchog has to be careful, it's more mobile, but not not against the rage. So RB activates rage mode, it can pretty much catch up there. Okay, the infantry army has been cleaned up and the Vortox have gone to do some counter damage too. Uh, generator gets made. Oh, Dark Angels without gens. That's a huge issue. He's got a little bit of power node income, but all the power you see for him right now will be spent into more generators, I guess. Uh, he can grab a follow-up expansion here. Supposedly, that would be fine. But yep, Salak has kind of lost a little bit of momentum, so using the RB to capture a power node, in my opinion, is a no-go. You should be going across the map and dealing with the generators so that they just don't keep coming back. But at the same time, he needs to defend his home base. He doesn't have a whole lot of units. 20 population right now, no resources. So, yeah, those Braves are going to be expensive. He's not even making any. And there's two Vultures in his face. I don't know, man. This is looking really tough. Arby pulls back once again. We got a shield and what's that? Is that a normal turret? Can't see. Maybe now? No. We're not allowed to see. Anyway. Arby can't take on this much. Maybe with the shield he can postpone things a little bit, but... Uh, 
yeah, that Wraith and Reaver Slater can't come soon enough. Shield's almost drained already. And the RB hasn't gotten to recharge his personal shield, so yeah, that's tough. Using a stasis real quick on this army. We'll buy him some more time. There's a Reaver now, there's a Wraith now. And hopefully even more of that coming out for Psylac to at least gain some foothold in this game. Uh, he's got the three power nodes on the map versus the one of Dark Angel plus this mini is going for the moment. But how is he gonna hold his base? It's looking tough. And as Dark Angel keeps adding more and more of these flyboys, it's gonna be problematic to face off against them with just a handful of Reavers. Now, I think he was doing a good job of keeping everything alive thus far. But as we go up to 3 plus Reavers under a shield, yeah, the Vultures and the Nightingales are gonna have a tough time. So Dark Angel will have to come back with a bigger, stronger army. Uh-oh. The Vultures are getting destroyed. Psylac may have turned this around, ladies and gentlemen. It's looking pretty good. Another kill. For no losses. Wow. Very nicely done. However, in the back, there's been action happening. Uh, looks like the... Big boys have been dropped in, Dark Angel taken over the mini, he's also got the expo on the far side, these guys are heavy metal buffed. And now going for the shield generator would be a fantastic kill, but bear in mind that's the anti-vehicle turret. Once this heavy metal is gone, these guys are gonna be hurt, not just a little bit. Uh, unfortunately only two of the mines spawned, so easy enough to avoid that. We've also got the lag bomb coming in on the buildings, almost none of them missing. Oh that's huge, very nice damage done. However, the Arbiter is going to use these tanks to just heal up real quick. <laughs> How convenient. Lost the generator though. Might lose a second one at this rate. Oh boy. It's a good amount of losses. Definitely not insignificant. Psylac might lose another mini. And meanwhile, the Archangel can finally populate this base. I think he's forgotten about it, guys. It's a little slow there. A little slow, but not critical damage to himself at least. So... Can be forgiven. Good job with the Reavers and Engineers to try and protect this. The Reavers are just gonna be a decoy for a moment. Be nice to save him though. Oh, ouch. H. Good catch with the Stasis on the Hog. Be nice to do that for the Forge Hog and then kill the normal Hogs. And Forge Hog will just have to respect this army from there. Yeah, crazy how 18 minutes in, these basic Vortox is still doing some work. Although I think the Hunters and Braves saw the end of that. Yeah, best just go home. We've got some nukes chasing the RB. He has to be careful about that. Sure, he can hit the mini bases. Air upgrade once coming in for Dark Angel. Would like to see some more... I think the second population upgrade is justified at this point. Upgrading your bases to 7 slots is justified as well. Don't want to give Arbiter an inch, right? So... Best set up everything. Maximize your economy. Get those mass watchers going and... Do the... Combat Savage attacks. Good job with the Jackrabbit still. Being around. Oh, Kodiaks. Okay. Generally speaking, Psylac has been better at spending his resources than Dark Angel, but he just doesn't have the map control, whereas a Forge player is kind of dominating the map. It doesn't matter if your army just straight up demolishes the other one. This UNSC army is looking extremely small and fragile right now, and the RB can just run around the map and do whatever he wants. Potentially hitting this next. Forcing our Forge player to just follow him around. And not really get anything done in terms of, you know, meaningful progress on the map. Uh, as time passes, Psylac is building up his leader power points. And the more of those he has, the greater his ability to uh, build a huge lasting advantage. If you get to three points in... Uh, what's its face? Plaza Bolt you'll be able to delete generators. So you come by this base, you target this little corner, and you hit all three 
the supply pad generator and the air pad, it's gone. You can just keep doing that repeatedly to hurt the UNSC economy. And yeah, chat is talking right now about really late game Arbiter. Where you start getting Power Surge, which is the passive that reduces the cooldowns of the leader powers. Yeah, that's a problem because every leader power grants you the little buffs from Conduit of Rage, right? Units become faster, they siphon life, they hit harder. Not the kind of stuff you constantly want to deal with in the middle of battle. Uh, plus, add to that that there's stasis. Is. So, how if your army gets put into stasis, the other one gets owned by buff units. Not fun, not fun. Forge needs to do something, and soon. Yeah, pretty, pretty minimal little pieces of damage getting done by Psylac here. He's finally upgraded his population, so... Uh, can work himself up to 100. Dark Angel is still stuck on 100 himself, but getting the 7 slot. Air upgrade 3 is happening. And hopefully he will also queue up population level 2. And then 120 pop of vultures with a little bit of maybe wolverines could go and hit this base. Psyrlak has a lot of blue, so I would like to see him put up those cloak gens, protect his base real good. Oh, Dark Angel is about to lose his expo to an enforcer drop plus RB. This is very annoying for sure. What are you running around with a few hogs? Can only get, get you so much. Like the hunter upgrade. Make sure they never miss. There's a little bit more DPS, but there's this big cooldown between their attacks, which is very inconvenient. But hey, at least they'll never miss. Okay, Vultures are delivering some nukes there. Oh god! Three, three of the tanks immediately gone. And the Kodiak can do a little bit of shelling, of course. Psylac can see up here. And the Vultures aren't affected by the Fortrock's protective aura. So the Reavers are absolutely tearing them a new one. That hurts. Also, the Cloaking Gen is up here. So you do need some Wolverines to spot. But now with four Kodiaks shelling this and Dark Angel finally having the 120 pop cap limit, I think if you can max out here somehow, even if it's just a grizzly drop, that would be absolutely fantastic. Vehicle drop is ready again. I think the vultures might actually be a decoy right now. Well, these reavers are doing a great job defending, but how long can you hold against mass Kodiak? Oh! The Kodiaks are getting taken care of as well by the RB. That's a good move. Psylac knows that he can't really be risking his RB too much, but one Kodiak or even three Kodiak shelling him is not that big of a deal. He got the, he's got the reflection, right? So every time these Kodiaks manage to hit him, they actually damage themselves too. And the RB just anime sprints, attacks something, and heals himself in the process. Once again, the enforcers are coming in too. And even with anti-infantry turrets, I'm just not so sure that this can be held. The generator gets killed immediately. And Dark Angel's base is getting weaker and weaker as time passes. The Kodiaks are shelling. Slowly but surely, but not that much to hit there. And there's certainly no detection for this. Uh, the Nightingales can smoke the base for a little while. But we're gonna just see a teleport escaping from the nuke. Yes, they managed to escape it. Of course, once the nuke is shot, it will fall, but it, it, it didn't get to, to fly off yet. 
So when you see the targeting laser, you're still good. When you see the missile, you're screwed. <laughs> You guys are predicting the Condor. <laughs> I, I think that would be hilarious, but very unlikely. Okay, Dark Angel's calling in the Grizzles. Maybe he wants to stack him. I don't think they're upgraded, though. These are just basic. Yeah. Well, let's see if the Forchok can do something about the RB. He's just gonna jump up and get the gales. Free hitting them. Wow, that's brutal. Hey, finish it off. My man. He doesn't want it. He doesn't want it, but at least Dark Angel kept his base going. And you're not gonna push that with two Wraiths. The Reavers do totally negligible damage against buildings anyway. Uh, gonna be swapping the turrets over to anti-vehicle now. Still says anti-infantry. I've not seen that issue before. Okay, there we go. Dark Angel saving for retirement, maybe. <laughs> well, the longer this lasts, the worse for Dark Angel. So saving for retirement is not a good strategy here. You cannot transfer your allowance from one year to the next match, so just like in real life. If there's a next life, you can't transfer your resources. Very sad. Anyway. Ah, it's fine, we'll make our own. Would you guys upload yourselves? Anyway, that wouldn't be you. That's a copy of you, so. Gotta win this match, Dark Angel. That's the conclusion. While you have the resources, spend them. That's good, RTS fundamentals. Nice hit with the nuke. Where did it come from, though? This vulture? I guess so. Chasing down the Arbiter is one of the most difficult things that I could imagine in Halo Wars 2. Just keeps running away, gets teleported, and, <laughs> like... Phantom's getting added in the late game. Okay. What else? Infantry upgrades coming in. That's good, but what infantry will be put in there? Sarlacc has never been able to really establish a third base, and it doesn't look like it's gonna happen now. Oh, the RB might actually go down, but Stasis saves him. Gives him a little bit of extra regen there, and he just hides it on the edge of the map. So this four truck is getting completely countered by the shrouds now. Along with the tanks, they also uh, their shots are getting eaten up by the shrouds. RB's back with some semblance of health. That one Reaver in the middle of the unit mix is being pretty annoying. There's another Condors of Rage. I think that was the ability. Yeah, it was. Uh, he's just healing through the damage, man. This is bonkers. Stasis Mine is ready to go. More Condors of Rage. But with the Reaver down, the Nightingales might actually make it. They are healing each other up, so that's looking good. Okay, let's see what Psylax is doing next. Hunters. Yeah, not a bad idea. There's like no anti-air, right? So, you might as well go and destroy those tanks. It's also a decent answer against Wolverines. As long as you have Conduit of Rage active. Oh, nice catch. Okay, Dark Angel did need that. There's a lot of Vultures now. Is that gonna be actually enough to push the base? There's a bunch of veteran Kodiaks here defending. I like that positioning in case there's a counter-attack. Not a lot of detection here, though. The Reaver already picking it off. There's Wolverines. Let's see if that's gonna be enough. 
again, not many vultures. And there's a lot of a lot of the reavers chilling here. Psylac on 87 population and a million resources. Definitely needs a 120 population upgrade at this point. There is Dark Angel. Finally procs his ultimate ability, so all these vehicles will be getting back. Combat salvage, super useful in these cases. You kill some units, but you get all of your dead ones back. Or essentially all of them. Doesn't quite get the reaver kill. And won't either. But yeah, like I said, every single unit that just died is back here now. This is a pretty good deal overall for Dark Angel. Certainly resource effective. More vultures coming in. He can max out on vultures and a few wolverines maybe. I think that's gonna be fine. There's something in the back happening. Two enforcers are chilling there. Of course, the base is heavily defended with anti infantry turrets everywhere. Archangel's maxed out. He's on the fourth with his third base. Sorry, that's a fourth base. That's a fourth base. He's gonna allow that to die. No worries. As long as he does a good counter attack, he's gonna be fine. He's got a million resources in the bank. I'm moving up with the Kodiaks and then shelling this. Could be a really good play. Now the generator getting added in. I don't know about that. I feel like that was fine as an air pad. Are we going for the business again? Let's see if we can actually do some good damage. Okay, Psylac, it's really time for population level 2 now. <laughs> You've got 6k in the bank. The upgrade itself just costs 1250, so... The time has come, I think. Okay, the Hunters are now in Phantoms. And there's another one. Too bad they do nothing against Vultures. The Hunters, even in the Phantoms, can't shoot them. Arby gets teleported out and runs off into the sunset, maybe into a shield if he's lucky. I don't think he can escape this, dude. Oh my god! He stasis himself! He's immortal! He don't care! That was brilliant. Okay. <laughs> Very well played, Psylac. That was sick. Let's see if Dark Angel has some kind of answer. I mean, he's got a million vultures, so this base is not staying up. Uh, especially with all these tanks around in addition. Mines get nuked from a million miles away. But there's a good amount of anti-air too. You'll have to respect it. The fort truck itself will be struggling a little bit. And here come the nukes. There's more where that came from. Is there another stasis? Oh, it's coming in. For the most part, Psylac is going to be fine. Kept most everything alive. He's got the population upgrade as well, finally. But the base is destroyed because there was a straggler in the back. Nice. Got another drop in. Two star Kodiaks. So how do you deal with all these? <laughs> you guys are saying you wasted the stasis? Yes, but it was cool! The Arbiter can technically take it. He can take three nukes at one star, that's for sure. Yeah, watch this. Yeah, the third one would get him to like 75% health. So yes, he can technically take it. I think from now on, Dark Angel needs to just proc combat salvage when available and sacrifice all his vultures into a base. 
if he's got like seven or nine vultures, which is totally achievable, right? There. Nine population each, you should be able to make ten vultures and some detect. You ram that into a base with nukes, should be okay. Hey Hatchy, thanks for the raid. Good to see you. Hope your stream went well. Hey, who wants to see Hatchy play a show match? I think it's about time. Anyway. There it is. I think I think he's doing it this time. There's the tech from the Gales. And the turrets shooting the Fortrog. Perfect situation right now. Heal up the low boys and shoop the whoop. He's weakening the base a little bit before. Oh, oh, the stasis. Of course. In which case it was good that he staggered. Nice hit. Nice hit on the Phantom. But the base is back to full health, I'm afraid. Get the cloaking gen at least. Maybe the shield gen if there's time. Would love to see the Kodiaks move forward a little bit. Just enough so that they can shoot the base, you know. Oh! Oh! Those Reavers are about to evaporate. That was sick. I think that might be a level 2. Actually, off the trash drop. That's not a trash drop. That's a lag bomb. Sorry. Are we gonna face tank some more nukes? As long as he's carefully doing it, it's fine. Right, here comes three more nukes. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that engineer healing rate. Oh my god. It's so strong. Are we nearly ready to go back in again? We've got a plasma bolt as well. Uh, I don't think that's affecting the base's heal. Shield gen is coming up again, but there's another one. Psylag, you gotta, you gotta juggle it. Or is he waiting for it to come back into action? And, uh... Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Oh! Yeah, you can't just tank nukes all the time. He didn't have his shields, right? The shields are a massive part of this. So this is another great stasis, but the shield generators are still exposed in the back. As long as they're getting blasted by Kodiaks, the shield's not gonna come back up. Also, the Forgehog is shooting the other buildings, so... This is problematic. He should have juggled the shields for sure. So high risk to just hope that it comes back in time, but it usually doesn't happen like that. Taking down the Foundry will be the next big move. No more Reavers for you, buddy. Uh, there's another Foundry, fortunately enough, for Psylac. And I should probably make one on his main at this point, because... Well, this base might be gone, in fact. Uh, there is the other one. So, Sarlacc is far from dead, but this is great progress for Dark Angel. Every single base he can take down, obviously, is a huge progress towards victory. One nuke, once again, can uh, proc the <laughs> stasis out of him. Great bait, mate. One shield generator is destroyed. Scared? Yeah, that's not gonna happen, I don't think. This base is toast, dude. There's just no healing here. One NG, but as soon as it pops up, the vultures start firing their missiles. Silac hoping to keep this alive, but it just won't happen. The nuke comes through. Combat salvage is on. So actually, Dark Angel should sacrifice his units into the battle here, but won't be doing it. Up uh, Silac shielding and cloaking up the other base now. And hopefully, we'll be upgrading to a 7 slot as well. All the Kodiaks are getting moved. And overall, Dark Angel is in a great position with over 20,000 resources banked. He's getting infantry upgrades in case he needs it. I'm not sure what he would do with it, but I think... Uh, this is just for leader power points. You don't really want to actually make infantry against Arby during the super late game. The Arby hero itself doesn't care about snipers. Although, Stanchion snipers can do something. But they need constant supervision and healing. 
Otherwise, they just end up killing themselves with the reflect damage from the RB. <laughs> Grok says Dark Angel is being a patient, methodical monster. True. All right, let's see those reaver wiggles. You can dodge everything, buddy, but oh god, that hurt. He's lucky to not have a nuke. Once I played a game where <laughs> where I was getting out of the way of a leader power, and there was a nuke flying my way. I jumped my reavers. <laughs> they all died to one nuke. <laughs> They really like to clump up when you jump away, and Psylac is gonna give up anyway. Uh, Dark Angel has just been very, very clean with his late game here. Uh, this last base kill was just absolutely huge, and Psylac didn't see a way back despite his resource bank. Great first game, for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got in the blue color. Taking game one already, Dark Angel here on Fishers playing as Decimus, and on the other side of Fishers, this is Psylac in the red color. Looks like they're not going to meet in the middle just yet. Uh, there's no heavy action there, and everybody's quite spread out. So we've got the grunts on the sides, picking up the guaranteed power rather than having a heavy engagement. But because Psylac went closer to the Sentinels. He's now stuck between a rock and a hard place with the ram getting received, with the sentinel shooting him, Dark Angel having such a great start to this. Uh, but of course, Psylac will be coming out with a hero build, it seems to me. Uh, if he can upgrade that extractor in time. Dark Angel's ready to pick up a base, so is Psylac. And there's no additional fifth building just yet. Oh, he lost the mini base click. Dark Angel picked it up. So now Psylac has to get to the other mini base, and Dark Angel is fully aware, blocking the vision with the chopper, forcing Psylac into a hero and a big resource uh, saving. Dark Angel has all the buildings, he's getting a harvester now. And as long as he gets the Decimus, uh, sorry, the Warlord Hero out, he would be able to counter the... Yeah, exactly. Psylac can't actually make that hero because he'll just be countered. Best uh, go for an Expo at this point. Hopefully he hasn't spent his early leader powers on not fortifications. And he can just go with the cheap Expo now. I don't didn't pay attention to the resources, but maybe someone in chat can update me. Was that fortifications or not Raid camp coming in from Dark Angel And there's another chopper coming Yeah, which is a good idea in case there's unupgraded grunts, right? Choppers certainly can manhandle them and they're also a good answer to suicide grunts should there be any And now Dark Angel can just utilize his own jump pack brutes, go after this expo, which is fairly obviously placed. I really hope he doesn't go to the main though, because that seems more defendable to me. It's gonna be just jump pack brutes. Spam, spam, spam. Ah, switching to the hero. It's a good idea, just in case, just in case, but... I feel like he's, he's committing to a little bit of nothing right now. Yeah, just a Sui, at least half of them. And the chopper should be able to finish that off without getting any damage in retaliation. Ah, uh, no guys, if he makes the Chosen, Psylac is not fine. Because if Dark Angel makes the Warlord, the Warlord pulls in the Chosen, slaps him with the hammer, he's stunned, then you Vortex him, and then he's dead. That's it. Especially if you can add... Especially if you can add jump back brutes to that. 
we do massive damage against heroes. The generator is already down, so this is looking very good for Dark Angel. He wins game two. Super solid, super solid right there. That was beautiful. Okay, game number three. Dark Angel is going to be playing as Atriox right now. And on the other side, we have got Psylac going for Shipmaster. A little bit of a banished mirror again. Now, this is a very comfy map for Atriox normally, but Shipmaster can do a lot as well. Very difficult to take on that Chosen, of course. Especially if Atriox has enough detection. Uh, but you can run around with that Honor Guard a lot. Your, your early game Ghost Suicide Grunt combos will be nice as well. And then there's the whole stacking Spirit Support thing. Uh, the early chopper also fantastic for Atriox. So everyone has a bit of an advantage in one area or another. Alright, one kill. Now Psylac heading for mini bases, getting the sensor tower as well to spot for the back mini. So it's a cleaner solution than having the Grunt Watts over. And we're gonna have an early war council for supposedly both players based on the mini mini base timings. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. It looks like a Dark Angel is more interested in trying to grab a mini on the other side of the map, but fails doing it. So early expo maybe? Nah, he's just turning back to the minis. But yeah, he's gonna face a hero soon. Hey, Psylocke actually upgrading another pad before getting the hero, so this War Council is just gonna idle there for a while. Not super convinced. Dark Angel also getting to pick up some of his resources that are on the other side of the map. Now the Elite Grunts are working on the power nodes. It's gonna be some much needed help to the power income. And also in the back mini base, I assume there's going to be a generator for our shipmaster player here. On the guard being made now. Chopper could have potentially stopped this grunt from capture. Oh, Psylax is gonna do it himself! We don't need Dark Angel to stop this. Oh no. Definitely got a little bit over eager there. But moving out. But he fixed it, it's fine. So there's the honor guard. And the upgrade immediately comes in after. Psylac has two upgraded extractors already and working on another generator upgrade, but he barely has any units. Might need to make that chosen very soon. Honor Guard might be able to do something in this main base, uh, but there are sensor towers. Well, there's one. They also build very quickly, so super difficult to actually stop it from coming up. Uh, Grant's gonna waste a little bit of time here. For the Honor Guard, going after the Extractor now. Is the Chosen gonna arrive in time? Maybe. But the Honor Guard isn't gonna risk it. Uh, there was also going to be Engineer, so Dark Angel's playing a very safe game. But not a very fast game. Meanwhile, Psyrlac is taking over power nodes. Uh, now gonna be two at a time. And then he's got these two generators himself upgraded. Um, might be enough to actually catch up to where Dark Angel is right now. We've got a Chosen who is only now getting plasma rounds. It's another bit of saving grace for Psylac. But there, he's also going to have to face Brutes. There's three Brutes here right now. So together with the Chosen... Oh, he's going the wrong way. They could have had him, I think. Hits the Honor Guard, but... Walks it off. Oh! The Dark Angel's... Grabbing the bases on the other side of the map. Psylocke immediately spots it. But does he know about every base? He doesn't know about this one. As... Oh, wait. 
he does, he did see it somehow. So he knows what to do next exactly. And he can just maintain control over the power nodes. His hero is doing okay here, at least throwing things down, if nothing else. Uh, but I, I think it's time to run. Always oh, gonna take several shots from the Chosen during this animation. And as long as the Engineer follows, he will be spotted. The Chosen will keep slowing him down too. So Extraction will probably need to be used at this point. To just make sure to get away. Uh, the Chosen actually misses a shot, so he's fine now. That means he can escape. Dark Angel gets a base up. Silac doing a revenge base grab. This one engineer won't be able to last too long against the grunts. There's also some brutes here, which are idle for whatever reason. I assume it's a hold position command. But yeah, Dark Angel's definitely gonna lose this. Even with the chosen defending, I just... Oh wait, the engineer maybe! That's a different story. But we've got a beam. <laughs> Targeting only the Chosen, and the dodging is actually not that bad. Uh, chosen survives, kinda. Let's see if Dark Angel can keep this base going a little bit longer. The Engineer is dead, but Suicide Grunts are now helping to keep the base alive. There is, however, the Honor Guard, which should be able to finish this off. Yeah, there it goes. Turrets happening as well. Dark Angel has another base, but so does Psylac. We've got the Brutes finishing off one mini base so far. Moving on to the next one. Psylac might be in a little bit of trouble, but he is tier 2. He's gonna make a bunch of Dark Skies Brutes. Okay, Dark Skies is coming in before more units. Very interesting to see that from a Shipmaster player, especially in the Atriox matchup. I am not sure that Dark Angel can hold here. So this is looking pretty good overall for Psylac. He's taking down this base as well with the Honor Guard. And I don't see any Chosen coming out. It's 20 seconds out. So yeah, this is Toast. This won't work. This is probably Toast as well. Uh, there's no Engineers anywhere. Dark Angel isn't clicking tier 2. Until just now, that's 200 power late, you know, it's not nothing. The engineer was also on the wrong base, that's the enemy base. And with the follow-up army, there's just no way to keep this alive. As long as Psylac has a little split, even Beam can't wipe this kind of army out, especially the Honor Guard can run away super easily. It's like the Brutes want to smack the Sensor Tower, or they're just stuck in the pathing. Bit of a nightmare there, but... Anyway, the Grunts have an easy enough job against the Engineer. A little bit of split coming in. Uh, Brutes don't have their jump available right now. Wow, that beam just cleaned up everything. That's crazy. Uh, turret will do the rest. Why did the Honor Guard leave, man? That was totally doable. Just put the Grunts on the NG. Keep the... Keep the hero around. Maybe Dark Angel now is a way back into this. Uh, but, you know, with Locusts, Reaver, Ranger, Honor Guard, Tier 2 upgrade coming in. Uh, mm, I'm liking where Psylac is right now. This is looking good. Dark Angel attempting to take further bases. It's not gonna happen. Psylac is keeping an eye on it. He, this time around, also has spirit support. And all this base is healing pretty good. The NG is finally taken down. Honor, Honor Guard is not yet upgraded. And it's not happening either. Infantry level 1 is coming in, however. The Ranger and Chosen might be taking him down. But there's always Extract. There's always... Cloaking, there's always just his normal speed to run away with. And that's looking pretty good so far. Dark Angel might need to use a heal. 
Salak has a beam available too. Space doesn't look very killable. I'm just so surprised that Dark Angel only now made an Apex. Ooh, Engineer is about to come out. This might actually work. The Chosen is defending everything. And we've got the Bulwark. That's going to be a fairly big heal over time. Not the strongest heal in the game by far, but it's something. Look at that. The base is almost at 40% health. Now, can the Chosen, even with the tier 2 upgrade, actually uh, beat that many units? It's The elites themselves are already high in number, right? So... It's gonna matter, the beam is coming down as well on the slow, the Chosen. Doesn't look like the Honor Guard wants to attack. As he's just running in circles, but goes down anyway. Didn't need it. Psylac is in a great position to finally break this base. Uh, just gotta take down that Apex. Maybe make one Locust. And he's doing exactly that. More Hunters and uh, Rangers and Reavers will be following, I'm sure. Might not even need the Locust, the Hammer Brutes are doing the job. Dark Angel's base is toast, and I think Dark Angel himself is toast, as Psylocke has been controlling five power nodes for this whole time. Now working himself to tier 3 soon, as he's maxed out. Nothing else left to do, but to go to the main. We got a sub from Mr. Shaba. Thank you very much. Hope you're having a good time there. Appreciate the support. Right, there's no shield here. There's no chosen yet. Where is the chosen? Okay, it's almost here. So there's a there's a chance. There's hope. Maybe Dark Angel can eradicate the army. You know, something, something. But it's looking tough. It's an anti-air turret. There's the shield up. So the engines are not safe. Psylocke will have to respect this. That's a suicide grunt drop. Extraction will save the army. No, that was a teleport. I'll extract. So he's crash into the infantry. Take down a lot of the models, but doesn't quite eradicate the actual unit. Squad keeps going. Alrighty, got a distraction base, if you like. Marauders? Yeah, that's the only play I think right now for Dark Angel. He needs to do base damage. And these bases are turreted up, there's hunters around. Uh, it's looking so tough right now to make a comeback happen, but if anyone, anyone can do it, it's Atriox. It's just so tough against Shipmasters specifically. He just displaces your army and then beams it on one base economy, so you can't rebuild. At least Atriox has answers to that, both with Bulwark and with Teleport of your own. But as you can see, these base buying attempts aren't working. That was pricey. Vehicles are still level 1. Psylocke has not been upgrading them, but he's ready to go tier 3. And then get the... Get the hero upgrade. Get a bunch of wraiths out. Should be good. Good job by Dark Angel saving the mini, at least. Is this hero gonna go down? These slows are pretty impactful. Oh, that last one didn't work. Well, the honor guard gets away once more. Psylocke is gearing up for what could be potentially the last attack in this match.
My spirits support is oh the spirit is sought, I'm sorry, we're in Dark Angels for you. I'm just not sure what else he can do at this point. Um, I guess an eradication would could be nice, but it's probably gonna be dodged and avoided. Either with teleport or with micro or whatever. Spirit versus spirit, one of them is better though. A lot better. Oh god, the Zoo's just disappeared. Haha! <laughs> yeah, that didn't work out very well. Our control has another decoy base somehow. He's tier 3. So we'll be able to make Wraiths and Rifled Barrel coming in as well. And I think Psylax tier 3 is coming in as well now. So he'll be able to more or less match that. Teleport. Saving the units from the displays. They are back. But this is where the beam is as well. Actually, it's not doing anything. The NGs might get away. Although the reverse will finish it off. Locust getting beam next. And they don't have a lot of health, so they can't really take that. One Wraith is out. And so far only the sensor tower has taken damage. Which is not the best. Chosen actually snipes an engineer from a mile away. Very cool. But then there's stuff in the back happening. Yeah, that needs to be dealt with. Dude, if Dark Angel can get this base back, it's not all hopes lost just yet. This could work. But all the valuable veteran units have been saved by extraction here. Psylak is in a fantastic position still. Is he gonna make a Freaking! Oh my god. He's making a scarab, isn't he? There it is. It's crab. He's actually doing it. So, how can Dark Angel beat the scarab? he maxes out on Wraiths, then maybe he's got a chance. He's, he can use a bunch of invulnerabilities. But I assume the Scarab is going to get a lot of healing itself. Although I don't see any Engineers on the field right now. Maybe that could be Psylax's downfall. If he loses the Scarab, they're in a more comparable position by then. And these units are ripe for the picking too. If the Chosen was only in the right spot. Yeah, getting all those veteran hunters is very important right now for the Braves to function against the Scarab. So, like the shielding from the Archangel. But the Scarab's looking tough. I'm shocked that Psylak has never made a... ...thing. Oh, my brain is turned off completely. <laughs> it needs to make shrouds, because it beats both the Wraiths and completely neuters what the Chosen can do. So having two or three Shrouds as Shipmaster in this matchup is absolutely essential. Especially you need that support for the Scarab, right? Infantry upgrade 3 coming in before population upgrade level 2. The Dark Angel doesn't even have one population upgrade right now. He's making Wraiths one by one, he's getting a vehicle upgrade because he doesn't have resources. Um, hopefully he can afford a base upgrade or a fortification upgrade. Superhero landing. Alright. So a lot of hunters that are veteran too. Dark Angel knows exactly what's coming his way. I think he's saving up resources for an eradication so that he can get these lighter units. He's getting displaced, however, onto the far side of his own base and the Scarab is targeting down the Expo. Chosen's fighting the Honor Guard. He should, probably is a fight he should be taking. 
Blasting Beam is ready to go, but it's uh, that one is not Dark Angels. That one's Psylax, and Dark Angel's army is just melting away. Uh, Dark Angel now has the resources for an eradication, but the Scarab is putting up the shield. He's invulnerable. The base is getting a little bit of healing, but it's not enough. Even with the Engineer support, he instantly loses the Engineer. The Honor Guard is toast. The Scarab is not actually that healthy anymore. But engineers are getting called in, immediately followed up by a beam from Dark Angel. The engineers go pop. Can he eradicate the Scarab or what? The hero's about to die. Oh boy. There's no line of sight left. Think. Think. Dark Angel's toast. Psylax has done it. Well done. Good game. Here we go! Game number four on Mirage. Dark Angel will be picking up the Pavium. Did not expect that. Almost never get to see Pavium on Mirage. Psylac going for the Yap Yap. That's a bit of a better one. In my opinion, for this map. And also, generally speaking, Yap Yap is good against Pavium. If the map isn't like too huge or whatever. I, I really like the Heavy Grunts plus Methane against against the Pavium hero. Takes him down real quick and takes care of a lot of your problems in general like that. Uh, Dark Angel not pumping out any early extra units besides just wanting the mini bases. He got himself, what, one extra grunt? So playing it super safe here. And not giving Psylac any opportunities to steal stuff. Psylac himself hasn't gone for any choppers. So it's just a initial cannon fodder. Plus the ones he's training. So Dark Angel probably gonna go for double generator in the main. Um, as soon as these mini bases are popped up with with stuff. No, no, he's making the harvester. What? You've got so many resources. What's going on with this? Maybe it's too risky to do that against Yap Yap. You can just grab the middle mini. Double raid camp you. Dark Angel is going to be doing the one, going to be the one to, to grab this instead. Very interesting. More and more cannon fodder coming in. Liam says this is the Hetchy Pavium strat, strat. Could you explain what the Hetchy Pavium strat on Mirage is? I just don't see a strong argument for Pavium. Limousines could be okay against Yap Yap, but... Eh. It's slow and clumsy and you get EMP'd. Yeah, I just don't see what you do against the heavy, heavy grunts, man. It was one limo for the hero. <laughs> well, we got, we're gonna have a hero, that's for sure. And Psylac has the double raid camp. Having to work his way up to this center base. Fabio, man. What about the main base, dude? These boys are gonna smack it. I don't know, guys. This is rough. <laughs> Even the mini bases are getting slappity slapped by the cannon fodder. Eventually, it will do some damage. Eventually. You guys are flooding across from every single side of the map. Even a full base is being picked up by Psylac as he's approaching Max out. And guess what? This boy can be only in one place at one time. So you hit two places as Yap Yap. Always. And those mini bases will go down. Alright, the Grunts at least have the Mines. That's a little bit of a saving grace here. Uh, so this one mini base will be saved for the moment by Pavium, of course. The healing 
coming in clutch. But what happens with the other two mini bases? That's a little rough, man. Okay, to be fair, it's only cannon fodder for the moment. But for how much longer? Psylac does have some population space to do more stuff. He's got the double generator at home. He's going to tier 2 as well. Before Dark Angel does. Well before Dark Angel does. Oh my goodness. Now, hitting the main probably not the smartest idea right now. But if you're Psylac, you're happy enough with where you are, I think. Because you're ahead in minis. You're ahead in the base count. And sure, here come the Brutes. But the Grunt Riders can kind of trade evenly with that. The Pavium is problematic. Um, surprised to see zero methane usage thus far. And we're not going to see the EMP heavy grunts either. Alright, Dark Angel saves the mini. And we're back now, here come the shades. The shade turrets definitely are annoying hitting the normal turrets as well as the extractor, the retarget. And this extractor definitely is in trouble, especially with the uh, with the brutes hammering it. Oh, this is going down. There's no way that he can come across the map, but the counterattack is on. Psylodak doesn't seem to be having many units. He's very low in population. Uh, so his home base is actually potentially toast. He hasn't been able to take the mini base down. And our Pavian player is going to continue. You've got a limousine as well. On the defense. Let's see if that will end up crossing the map or not. But I guess I was wrong. If there isn't going to be a heavy grunt methane strategy here, then you're not gonna kill the pavium. That's just a fact. Especially if he goes in the limousine. Okay, the beam is gonna be annoying and painful. Um, is it gonna kill him? Maybe, maybe not. The dodging is okay, but yeah, there's a there's an elite now and the heavy grunt. Two elites. This is over. Psylac, however, has lost two generators, so it's not nothing that he lost. Brutes will be able to do some counter damage to the elites, but their numbers will grow and they'll keep growing probably. The heroes are starting to arrive. Psylac does not have generators though still. And it will take some time for the power income to come back. I mean, Vapavium is kind of partying back here. Got regenerating buildings now. Full salvage is in. Dark Angel should be able to go to tier 2 momentarily. Still no EMP. There's only grunts in the air. Still, the limousine is a fantastic answer to the elites. That's why you need heavy grunts for it. Dark Angel up to 2,000 resources. You can definitely make another power extractor back there. The limousine count is also growing. Pavium is getting remade while all the buildings are regenerating themselves. Two Brutes will probably not be taking down the Gobbo. Especially if they stop their attacks all the time. It's a little unfortunate there. Okay, Psylac will be taking power nodes. Finally, it's so important to do that when you're generators are destroyed. In fact, it would be better to do it beforehand, just have them anyway. And then you can sustain the heavy hits like that. Dark Angel, knowing that he's fairly comfortable now, can start picking up bases and stuff. Is 
Zarak Expo is not upgraded. He hasn't had the power, guys. And this is gonna hurt. This is what you get for not going heavy grunts. Flavium with the nerf beam. Uh, it's actually hitting the base end of War Council. <laughs> uh, Psylak just sells the buildings. Good choice. It's more money than you would get from keeping them. And we're gonna have a bunch of Banshees coming out of Psylak. But I think Dark Angel uh, looks to be carrying this game forward now. And I just don't see really a way for... Psylax to come back into this, save for a, a drop on the other side of the map while Le uh, Liam? But Psylax, while Dark Angel isn't ready for it. Oh my goodness. I'm seeing these names in the chat and it's messing with my head. To be fair, I don't have a very big brain, so there is that. Only so many names can fit into it at once. This is a side effect of me covering like four different RTS games at a time. <laughs> anyway, Dark Angel's got this fantastic lich now. It's gonna take care of turrets. Getting EMP though. Did that EMP just not work? Shiogen is up. Should be stripped very quickly by all this firepower. However, the suicide ground connection should be huge. Actually, it doesn't end up being huge, just gets an isolated unit. Uh, we've, got, we've got elite rangers coming in for whatever reason, not locusts, not marauders or anything like that. So we'll have to do for now. Lich finally strips the shield off, it seems, before it can leave. It's not got a lot of health left, so... Maybe if it can get another building here, that would be huge. Okay! Okay, this is looking like a rather good Lich thus far. Weakening all these units as well. Pavi himself, he's gonna laser everything, I think. I'm just nerfing the methane wagon for the moment. All the other units are evaporating, though. Psylak is down to 30 population and he taps out. Whoa, okay, okay, okay. Well, guys, this is... Let this be a lesson. You gotta go heavy grunts. You gotta get EMP. You gotta get methane. That gets rid of the hero, easy peasy. And you can handle yourself against vehicles too as you transition into tier two. So I think that's such an important strategy to nail down. Could be the last match, this one. Number five, yeah. Dark Angel is gonna be going with Shipmaster in this one. It's a really good choice, I think, on this map specifically. Oh God, that grunt is wrecked. Never had a chance. Um, nice wiggles, but yeah, it's toast. <laughs> <laughs> um, Psylac on the other side gonna be playing as Decimus Both of them going for a pretty standard build. I really like the opener where you take one scout one infantry Down here to the big power barrel. It basically allows you to have a little bit of micro potential there But sometimes you just face like either nothing and they're out there taking the mini bases and that's problematic or they're bringing more units than you uh, those are not very fortunate situations. Um, both of those cases you'll probably have to turn away and make the best of what you can. But sometimes you just end up matching up either less or the same and that's when you can utilize your micro to win that power barrel and still get stuff done around the rest of the map. And you know, even if the other side picks up the mini bases, you at least got the power, so it's a trade-off. You decide what suits your playstyle, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, let me know how it goes. What's your favorite way to do that? I think the way Dark Angel did it, where you just send one grunt and otherwise go for uh, a spread, that might be the worst, because look, Psylac still gets his minis. He's, he's got the power. He's even got this power. That's only advantage as far as I can see. The only disadvantage is that he's not been able to um, get quite as much income for, for supplies from the minis. Dark Angel also got a 
second power extractor much faster than Psylocke ever will. I think here in the back mini is a good spot for it. And you don't have to recycle any buildings and they can keep doing their thing. A bit of power nodes, but both players are doing that, so not much differences overall, just grunts and grunts. We're not gonna see the shipmaster hero. But we're gonna see a lot of upgraded buildings from Dark Angel, so he's really macroing up. Now maybe switching to ghosts, that's a surprise. He's just got enough grunts out to do the capturing, but then he's gonna be going up against uh I'm pretty sure these guys have shrapnel mines. Yeah they do. So, yeah, the Grunts are gonna have Shrapnel Mines and uh, they're gonna face Ghosts, which... Oh, even the Voilord hero is coming out of Psylocke eventually. So, if he doesn't spot the Ghosts, then, yeah, he will make that hero. At which point I have to wonder, is that... Is that worthwhile? That hero really can touch Ghosts. He can pull them in, I guess. If lucky. Could take down on that chopper, by the way. Ghost build, no ghost. <laughs> they're coming, dude. They're coming. It's a fake out. They don't. They're not gonna get shielding. He's just using a handful to clean up the grunts. But he's actually going to you too. Dude, Psylocke has been had. <laughs> Dark Angel just playing with his food. Getting the Ninja Expo on top of everything. But yeah, he's forfeiting the power nodes. So, you know, th this is not without sacrifices. Certainly, he can take over the power nodes right now. But the hero is coming out. And if he spots the mini, uh, the base, which he does see on the minimap, um, he should absolutely go and take that down. Maybe the hero doesn't need to commit to that, but a handful of grunts is definitely a good idea. Just throw a bunch of mines at this thing and it will suddenly lose 25% health. It's a good start. But Psylocke, oh sorry, Dark Angel is tier 2. Psylocke super far away from that. And let's see what the additional buildings will be. I assume it's just Elite Rangers and Marauders from here. With two power nodes currently belonging to... Dark Angel, whereas our Psyduck is still controlling free, plus he's working on Dark Angel's expo here. Oh, ouch, H. And lastly, an extra harvester. Absolutely no sign of. Yeah, there's no shippy hero. How come? I guess our man just wants to save the power. You can always get him later, I guess. But diminishing returns, ladies and gentlemen. We've got active siphon plus vortex on the extractor. There's an elite ranger, however. Working away at the grunts, but they're siphoning pretty fast. Unfortunately, this has hit before Boundless Siphon, so uh, the grunts can't keep it going, and I'm not sure. They're... It doesn't look like their mines have been used here. It would have taken down the extractor if used in conjunction, I'm pretty sure. Especially while it was weakened by the Vortex. Now, the engineers will be holding here on the other side together with the turret. That's seeming pretty good to me. Of course, one thing that Decimus can do is go in tier 2 and starting to make Banshees. Those Boundless Siphon Banshees are something else. Um, of course, Shipmaster has ways of dealing with them, but... Must they really go out of control? Not much can be done on a big map like this. Big shame about that generator not going down. That's a big, big play, I think, to send the grunts in with the vortex. Essentially, guaranteed takedown, but just didn't happen due to no mining and 
no boundless siphon. Dark Angel now has an expo in Silax's face, and I don't think there is much that can be done about it. Free Elite Rangers, free Marauders, tons of engineers. This is protected. Clearly. Looks like those grunts are immune. Okay then. Dark Angel might just go tier 3. Dude, is he gonna, like, blister back this up? What is this? And should the mini bases are getting taken over by Psylax, so at least a little bit of advantage. Plus, he has the power node control. Um, yeah, pre pretty good position with that. Now the Marauders are building Psylax base. There's no repairing as he didn't go for any engineers. The beam's coming down on the elites. And you know what? The split is good. But meanwhile, the choppers are working on the rest. And there is this brute boy. Not gonna be easy to take him on. Although with this many units, I think you're fine. He has to respect it. The Banshees are gonna be made in numbers, I assume, soon. As long as the Marauders keep hitting that Brute with uh, slowing missiles, oh god. A lot of damage has been suffered there. Can we see more Banshees from Silac? He's getting Pack Brother. Which is going to be great for the Grunts to uh, sustain all the Elite Ranger damage, but is it enough? I think there's too many Marauders here already for base damage, so... Looks to me that Dark Angel is rather comfy. He's not worrying about too much. He's sure he's lost the mini bases, but if Psylac loses the main base, the expo here rather, uh, that's that's sufficient, you know. That's an okay trade. He can always reclaim the minis with all these marauders he's got. Oh wait, the shield generator! Uh, it's not happening. It's not cancelled. It's so expensive. Oh my goodness. Okay. Salak has control over all the power nodes. But Dark Angel is getting ready for the Wraith buildup. He's got the home base shielded. He's got double turret on it. He can click up to tier 3. He's retaking the power nodes, which is very nice. As well as an additional touch. And Salak is not making Banshees, which is going to come and bite him, I think. What does Psylac do? Situation he's in, this is not gonna be nice. Dark Angel reaches tier 3, he's researching Scorch Mortar. Oh my goodness. Dude. Only missing thing is now the population upgrade for Dark Angel, and then I'll actually shut up and stop complaining. He's done everything he needed to do in this game. Even defending against these little grunt counterattacks with the Marauders, and he can go and retake the minis. He spotted this thing is going on and pulling back at least the Marauders to take care of it. Yeah, great work. He's got the triple generator at home, so even if he loses some of the power node control, it's okay. So, like, attempting to retake the base, but it's not happening. The Braves aren't gonna allow for it. Pulling in the Elite Ranger there real quick. The Grants are also restoring themselves very quickly through Boundless Siphon. And we've got the Decimus drop coming in to take down a lot of the Engineers here with the Beam. But the Grants aren't following, so the Engineers should be getting away here. Although a lot of the Elites will die. But that's a sacrifice that Dark Angel will happily take. He's got a better anti-infantry unit coming up in the Wraiths. Oh god, oh god, the double... Hunter's Toast. To be fair, not very good in this matchup. There's no vehicles used anyway right now. Uh, Decimus is okay, but he won't be able to fight against uh, Wraiths and Marauders. The Marauders slow him down, the Wraiths kill him. 
So, very problematic for sure. Especially with the support of the elites. It's gonna be even worse. The Scorch is currently sitting under this guy. It's hurting a lot. One Wraith is destroyed. Beam should be ready. Yeah, there it is. So, might be able to get at least one of the heroes with this. Bandit Siphon, of course, tremendously useful in this situation. Uh, wonder where's the other Wraiths right now. There's not that many of them. So Dark Angel has been kind of caught out here. Gonna lose his Wraiths. Gets away with the Marauders at least. Got nearly 2,000 resources um, in power. Salax finally switching to Banshees. Don't know where he's making them just yet. Um, looks like minis? Yeah, he's got way too much production and way too little harvesters right now. So if you look around the map, you're gonna see this isn't one. This is one. This is two. Now he's got three more at home. He's got five harvesters right now. That's not enough for such a late game setup. But as long as he doesn't lose units, it's okay. The extractor will be destroyed. Turrets are getting wrecked. And the harv remaining harvesters will be exposed as well. If Dark Angel realized that that's actually an issue, he could do a base trade in that style. Just picking off the harvesters one by one. Denying Dark Angel the critical income. Sorry, denying Psylac the critical income that he needs. Spirit support will be available back home here for some much needed repairing. And a handful of vehicles are doing a lot of work, but there's now three anti-vehicle turrets. They can't break that. Uh, the generators have been destroyed, however. It looks like we've got an extraction back home, but the Decimus immediately exploiting it. There are also two hunters available. That have dealt with the vehicles. And they all have Boundless Fury, which gives them a lot of extra damage and speed. Displacement buying a little bit of time for Psylac here, but it looks like the Warlord is happy to stick around and just smack some elites down. Oh, dude. That elite got wrecked. A Dark Angel working on rebuilding, trying to grab a base now. It looks like the Grunts will be heading his way to try to take him down. If there's a bunch of raves, if there's a good beam, he can certainly defeat this group. Scorch Mortar should be thrown down as soon as possible. Yeah, the Hunters are being problematic here. One Wraith already toast. Scorches do go down on the Hunters, but even they are healing themselves with Boundless Siphon, so as long as he walks out of it, it's all good. Potentially looks like Psylac can turn this around after all. Just thanks to the power of Boundless Siphon. This attack isn't doing anything, but this one might destroy the entire base eventually. Oh, wait a second, Dark Angel has a lot of resources all of a sudden. I hope he's not making a Scarab. That doesn't really work against Decimus. Uh, because both of the heroes can actually pull the Scarab. It's kind of nonsense, but... Hey, they can do it. Reaver? Oh, well, well. Psylact, high in population right now. 82 to 19 pop. What is Dark Angel hoping for here? He doesn't have any big drops outside of spirit support. So very much need to spend those resources as soon as possible. He's trying to get extra bases left and right. Uh, this one will be definitely toast. I wonder if he could have snuck like a, sh a shield gen here. 
Uh, this might be savable. But those engineers are repairing pretty fast. So this is looking good, in fact. This glassing beam is ready to go. Extraction is ready to go. Setting all his buildings here. Bought a lot of time, I suppose. But he's still at 20 population only. And he's the one getting beamed first. Losing everything in the drop. Only one engineer remains. Dark Angel, what? <laughs> We're not making units. Raid camp? What? I don't get it. So many resources. Even the Scarab would be fine at this point. Like, you're so rich, you know? Beam was good. Uh, teleport definitely was not necessary to save the two grunts. But then again, it's just grunts. So was the beam actually good? Not cost effectively, no. So Alex building up to a, an absolute death ball and should be able to do pretty much anything. The elite rangers I don't like here because, again, the pulling. Both of the heroes will be able to pull those guys and stun them and keep them like that and then the decimus beams will also evaporate them so this should be a match with a lot of rays from our shipmaster player and then uh, the cloaking used as well to deal with the hunters a handful of shrouds not a bad idea to begin with well, that's a lot of grunts the race would evaporate them As long as they sit under the shield, at least, the pull won't work. So, there is that. Might actually snipe the Warlord there. Yeah, these guys tickle. He's gonna give up. And we've got ourselves at least one more game. Maybe two. Maybe we'll make it all the way to seven games. That was weird, Dark Angel. I don't know what happened there. In the blue color for game six, we have got Dark Angel. He's playing as Johnson in this one. Should be very interesting. On the other side, we have got Psylac playing Colony. Now both of these leaders are very powerful as they gear up to the later stages of the game, but Badlands is a lot about these mini bases in the middle. Now, you don't really see it often played in either tournaments or show matches, but here it is. Now, Dark Angel is going to be going for the bottom mini, which is also an uncommon pick. Neither player was rushing up to the to the north to pick up the big power crate. Um, it's very common that you would see the one, one infantry, one scout combo up there. Uh, but this might mean that Psylac will get over eager and buy both of these minis up here. Whereas you can already see where the rally point of Dark Angel is heading. He wants to rush, I think. Uh, there's, there's probably going to be a barracks here. And yeah, Hellbringers, man. Psylac, however, is prepared. Because he's planning a raid camp of his own in the main base. So that could be for suicide grunts. That could be for goliaths. Remains to be seen which one. But either choice is pretty good. Skitter is going to weaken the sentinels a little bit. So that later a grunt can come in and finish him off. Ideally you'll only take the fire from one sentinel at a time. So that you can actually kill one. Uh, but that's beside the point. Anyway the grunts are moving backwards now. They know that the... Hellbringers are coming soon, so you gotta be careful with that. The Johnson is gonna also be pumped out, and as soon as it crosses the map, you can start dropping bunkers and essentially going for the bunker crawl. Once you got the uh, level 2 bunker power available, you go be digging in deep as well. Oh, sorry, digging in, not deep. That happens later. Uh, that's what she said. Anyway, um, <laughs> that makes the bunker cheaper. 
level 2 bunker is shielded and stronger and allows for 4 people to go inside. So, or squads in fact, not just people. And Goliath's Kit is the name of the game for Psylac. He's also not overdoing anything else, and which means that he could be affording the Harvester upgrades over time. That will help him a lot. The Skits are also kiting away the infantry. Uh, buying a little bit of time here, attaching themselves to the to the Goliath is not a bad idea at all. But watch out for the Johnny. He's coming. This Smort missile is on the way as well. So Smort. Well, guess what? Johnny has a heal as well for the garrison. Two Goliaths are working hard on this. The, the heal is a little bit late. The infantry will have to do it on their own, but the engineers are about to go off into the good night. Second Goliath seems to be going down to the Johnny. Oh boy, that's that's a big loss. Very resource intensive, of course. Johnny on the way to the main base should be definitely capturing this power node it will only take a few seconds for the marines to evaporate the sentinels plus the johnny as well ideally stay still so that you can um you know actually get some veterans see but he's just gonna leave it all behind the marine can take care of it uh once it's done capturing it's not a node strat it's totally fine the uh, sentinel will definitely be toast Suicide ground coming down the high ground. This could be great. Oh, we got a beautiful pre-split from Dark Angel. Uh, but unfortunately, the units <laughs> reclumped right at the end. Another bunker is in. But there are three Goliaths, not just one, not, not just two. This is a tough one. I wouldn't necessarily put in the units. They'll be hurt on their way out. One of them instantly dies, in fact. And there's more Suis on the way as well. There's a turret coming up. Johnny tries his best to take down the suicide ground, but doesn't work out. There's even a sniper in addition to everything. Um, going for the raid camp would be nice right now. The chopper, uh, chopper skit is doing a lot of work here, but taken down by the Johnny, and now the Goliaths are getting sniped. It's the Johnny that just hasn't suffered much damage at all. Uh, he's preemptively using the heal, which I don't love. The units aren't particularly hurt right now. So, you can't heal shields either. Um, waiting for the next bunker might have been better, but this might actually end the series right there. Uh, the Marine will definitely take down that guy. Grunts never really stood a chance. Dark Angel would also have the opportunity to go tier 2 behind this momentarily. Uh, just picking up another bunker power level here. Uh, dropping in with the shield. Not shielded! It's not. He probably picked up EMP Mac Blast then. Okay, well the next move should be definitely going after the Vic Harvester. Uh, the turrets might be just too annoying to try to take on. And there's still room in that bunker for the Hellbringer, so the Johnny can just stay out there, tank the fire with his shield. Oh my god, he took down the Goliath from long range with the sniper, I assume. That's a very nice Hunter's Brand, but it didn't kill anything. So... Oh, popping in the wrong unit is Dark Angel, but no worries. As long as that sniper keeps working away from far away, Psylac is going to GG out knowing the Dark Angel can go tier 2 behind this, whereas he's a million miles away from it. And with that, Dark Angel is victorious in the series. Takes it 42. Overall, it's been pretty equal-ish. But uh, this one was extremely decisive in under 6 minutes, 20, mi 20 seconds. Takes home 30 bucks. Congrats to Dark Angel and huge thank you again to Sean V, Apex Sean, Team Respawn Sean for commissioning this show match. We want to thank our MetaPlace website subscribers. Your contribution helps us keep the project sustainable. As we reach higher subscription goals, you are helping us cover more and more behind the scenes costs such as video editing. Check out our subscription page using the link in the description and remember to collect your perks. We will see you the next time.